everyone. Thanks for pressing play. You are watching a brand new episode of Talking Comics, Excalibur CCG TV, where every week we come together to tell you about the great comics hitting the shelf for that week. This week, we are talking about March 23rd, 2016. I am Chris. This is my co-host, Buzz. We are excited to tell you about tons of great new comics that are hitting the shelf this week. And guys, thank you to all of our new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate it. Last week, we put out the call. We was like, hey, we got to break 900 because we're so close. And Buzz, did we break it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys helped us crush over the 900 subscriber mark. So we really, really appreciate it. Th welcome to all of our new subscribers, whether you came via YouTube uh, we be cool. Uh, we be geeks. Uh, BleedingCool.com. Uh, you found us on Stitcher or iTunes. Thanks for being a part of our YouTube community. We really, really appreciate it. This is where it starts from because of how we set everything up. So we really hope that you enjoy being a part of our YouTube community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate it. So guys, let's go ahead and dive in to the great stuff that we have for this week. We have a lot of new number ones that we're going to cover. And they're from several of the smaller companies. Uh, so it's a, a diverse group of new number ones. But we are going to start off with some of the more well-known or maybe more anticipated new number ones that are going to be hitting starting this week. So, Buzz, what are you going to start us off with, sir? Marvel presents Hyperion number one by Chuck Wendig and Nicole Varela. Yes. Hyperion's back traveling across the country trying to figure out more about the country that he has adopted. Along the way, picks up this uh, runaway named Doll. Doll. And who is in danger, chased by a pack of freaks and lunatics <laughs> known as the Carnies. Exactly. <laughs> Will Hyperion res reveal himself to save her? Will he use a tractor trailer as a baseball bat? Probably. Probably so. Probably. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know I've seen Chuck Wendig's name somewhere, but I, it's just not... Yeah. I can't remember where it is, so there it, we go. It is, yeah. He's, I think he's been around for a little while. Yeah, and I, I know I've seen Nicole uh, Varela. I've seen that name as well, too, but again, I was like, where have I seen... But I'm, I'm going to check out this series. It's oh, on yeah. my pool list. I, I like Hyperion. I've, I've always liked Hyperion. I want to see more of it. Uh, guys, moving on. Assassin's Creed Templars, number one from Titan Comics. Several Titan Comics titles we're going to be covering today. This one is by Fred Van Lente and Dennis Calero, both uh, creators we've seen in other places. We've seen him at Marvel, we've seen him at DC. Dennis Calero, I've seen his art uh, recently uh, on a couple of different titles. But now they're teaming up together here for Assassin's Creed Templars, number one. This takes a look at Darius Gift in 1927 as he arrives in Shanghai for his first assignment for the Templar Order. But while he's here in Shanghai, he gets entangled with the international settlements. And he gets mixed up as well with the mysterious, enigmatic Black Cross. So for all of you Assassin's Creed fans, here is, as far as I know, an ongoing series coming from Titan Comics with the Assassin's Creed world at play here. So enjoy that. Have fun with that, guys. Also from Titan Comics, we have Doctor Who... The fourth Doctor. Exactly. Number one of five. Is that the one with the scarf? Uh, yeah, it's the older... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one's by Gordon Rennie and Brian Williamson. A uh, mysterious woman commands a hidden army in a house of the blind. Sc Scryclops? Yeah, how about stalk that? Stalk the street? <laughs> and so <laughs> something alien and terrible screams from prehistory with a hunger that cannot be be sated. The fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane Smith return for an all-new adventure, Gaze of the Medusa. Gaze of the Medusa. And guys, this Doctor Who, the fourth Doctor, is way before my time. Mm. So if Scryclops are a thing, tell us about it, because I, I am clueless about it. If, you, if any of you guys are longtime Doctor Who fans and watchers, tell us about it. We'll, we'll talk about it. But there we go, guys. I know there's a lot of Doctor Who fans. And you get your, get your hands on this five-issue limited series from Titan Comics starting this week. Another one from Devil's Do slash First Comics is Delete, number one, by Jimmy Palmiotti and John Timms. We know Jimmy palmiotti has been writing Harley Quinn. He's done all kinds of stuff for both Marvel and DC. He's now more of a writer than anything else. He did the uh, 
In store Comic Con thing. Too. He was on there too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, guys, delete number one. This takes a look at the near future where science can implant or remove remove human memories, and it's, this type of technique is also used in uh, scan technology for criminal investigations. But what happens here in the future is a mute girl witnesses a multiple murder, and she must turn to a handyman for protection from the police and from an army of killers. So guys, if you want to try something a little different uh, from something different from uh, the regular companies, the big companies, Jimmy Palmiotti is giving you something here to check out here with Delete number one. Check it out. Have fun with that. From Titan Comics, Independence Day number one. Yes. By Victor Gishler. Yep. We're familiar with him from the Conan series that, he, that we had the exclusive cover of. Exactly. And uh, Dennis Calero. Uh, as our worlds unite against invaders from beyond the stars beneath the Atlantic Ocean, another mysterious craft prompts a top-secret investigation by the U.S. military. Yep. One which could prove the key to humanity's survival or its ultimate destruction. Destruction. This Calera is a busy guy, man. Yeah. That's the second one that we're talking about this week with him. Mm -hmm. So I guess he got himself some lead time on some stuff there. So you'll be getting plenty of Dennis Calera this mm -hmm. week. Kudos to you, sir. Keep knocking him out. Hey, last one up for the new number ones that we're talking about this week from Image Comics, Circuit Breaker number one. This is by written by Kevin McCarthy with art by fan favorite Kyle Baker. I've been wondering where he's been because I haven't seen anything from him in a long time. But here he is showing up with this story. This takes a look at Japan during World War IV. Because during this time, there were heroic robots that were created that helped turn the tide and helped them win the war. But later, these robots turned against mankind. Now, one of the chief scientists, one of the chief creators uh, behind them, builds one more of these heroic robot soldiers in the form of his granddaughter. And she is designed to help take down these evil ro robots, dismantle them. But the question is, she starts questioning her own programming. And now, is she going to do what she was programmed to do, or is she going to be the final nail in humanity's coffin with the changes that's going on with her? So, guys, there we go from Image Comics. Uh, you guys that are Kyle Baker fans, here he is. This is what he's doing. Uh, don't know if this is going to be a limited series. Uh, I mean, I don't know. When we see just a number one with nothing else by it, we're thinking ongoing until they cut it off. I'm not too worried about machines taking over. If you've ever talked to your phone, Siri, on there. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Clueless. <laughs> clueless. <laughs> clueless. Humorous at times, but mostly clueless. Yes. So, guys, those are the new, new number ones we're talking about this week. Like we mentioned before, many of them from some of the independent companies. Titan Comics. Uh, I think it was mainly Titan Comics. And then the, uh, the Devils Do. Uh, but, guys, there we go. We like to add some variety occasionally uh, whenever it is available. And those are some big, some big properties that are being covered with those titles. So enjoy that. Now it's time for us to move on to the storylines that are going on this week. And we have one, two, three Avengers standoff tie-in series. Buzz, what's up first? All new, all different Avengers number seven. The all new, all different Avengers versus <laughs> the uncanny Avengers. Why? How? Who cares? They're fighting. <laughs> Just get it on with it. Yeah, make it happen, Captain. <laughs> Speaking of Avengers, we also have New Avengers yes. number eight. Yep. Another Avenger standoff time. The New Avengers are a global rescue force, but what's happening when they have to rescue someone from Shield? From Shield. From Shield. What the world? Answer: This means war. Yes, exactly. 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 And the beginning of the three-part storyline that changes everything. everything. Plus, the traitor revealed, and the twists keep coming. Who or what is the American? Fusion. <laughs> you crazy. Fusion. Kaiju. Fusion. Fusion. <laughs> this guy was like, where has this even been revealed at in the series? Uh, an American Kaiju. I didn't even know they were having a Godzilla type monster thing going on in, in the series. So. That's interesting to me. I'm going to pick that up and take a flip through that book and see what's going on with that. Uh, also, last up for the Avengers standoff tie-ins, we have Howling Commandos of S.H.I.E.L.D. number 6 hitting this week. We get the Commandos searching for their missing ally, Orgo. Secrets are revealed when the uh, team encounters an enemy that who can manipulate reality itself. So, guys, nothing pending 
this week from DC or any other company, but we do have these Avengers standoff tie-ins hitting that are leading up to some big stuff that's going to be happening. And guys, if you've been reading all this uh, Pleasant Hill stuff that's been going on, there's there's some big things in the work, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what they're going to do with it here in the future. So guys, that's it for the storylines this week. Now we're moving on to our favorites. These are the first comics that we will be reading. They will be at the top of our stack of comics to read. Buzz, what's up for you? Batman number 50. Yes. Bruce Wayne is back, but more importantly... Greg Capullo is back on our. Yes. I was going through withdrawals after that last issue. I, I know, just, right? Mm. It's not so. Anyway, uh, Bruce, as Batman, will be fighting right alongside Commissioner Gordon. Yes. As Batman as well. Versus Bloom. This is the final part of the storyline. Yeah. It's been pretty interesting. Glad Bruce is back. And then a note to anybody getting this this is going to be a $4.99 or $5.99 issue because it's going to be extra sized. As well, so not only are we getting the Capula goodness back, but we're getting a huge dose of it as well. Mm. I'm probably why I had to take last month off to draw all this issue. I'll take it. I'll take it. What's I next for you, bro? Rocketeer at War number two. Rocketeer. Yes. Don't miss the next thrilling chapter, which has been delayed severely, of <laughs> the Rocketeer by superstars Mark Guggenheim and Dave Bullock. The Rocketeer takes to the skies in this thrilling World War Two. What is Project Bedlam, and does Cliff Sickord stand a chance of stopping the Nazis' plans for world domination? No, I don't know. I don't know if they'll make it. I mean, we're already at World War Four, and one of those other <laughs> exactly. What happened to three? <laughs> All right, last up, <laughs> Cry ha- Havoc Havoc <laughs> Number Three. Um. Uh. The description is, come Mr. Taliban, tally me some drama. Oh, really? Midnight come and we can't go home. So you've been reading this series. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I'm i behind on my reading, guys. I picked up the first issue, but I haven't read it yet. I thought it was just about werewolves, but after last issue, it is about a lot more than just werewolves. It's a lot more. Mm-hmm. A lot more going on. Like, I thought the, the, the premise of the book was they were taking werewolves over to... Afghanistan to fight the war for America, but there's more to it than that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. I need to get caught up then. Right. I have so much to catch up on. There's other monsters besides werewolves in this. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yes. Nice. Different takes on things? Like, yeah, like stuff you would have never thought of as like a monster, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get caught up then. So guys, for me, uh, top of my stack, Uncanny X-Men number five, Colin Bunn and Greg, Greg Land have been doing a great job with us. Right. I've really been enjoying this. And this is the final comfort, confrontation between the Uncanny X-Men and the Dark Riders. We've already had one X-Men, X-Men get killed. And now this team of X-Men are out to deliver a retribution. What price will they pay to exact their revenge? I want to see what the aftermath is from this. Also, Birthright 15 from Image Comics. Buzz, we both get this. I'm looking forward to this. What if... Buzz, what if there was actually a plan, like for this the Rhodes family to be involved in all this? Mm-hmm. What if it was like planned? There's a big secret that's supposed to be revealed in this issue, and it does center around the Rhodes family, who has been the core family for this whole for this whole saga so far. I've wondered if there was more to the uh, chosen one or whatever. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So will we just be teased, or will we actually get to find out this week? So hopefully we'll get to find out. And then, guys, another one that I'm really looking forward to from Image Comics is the Rattler graphic novel that's coming out by Jason McNamara and Greg Hinkle. Greg Hinkle is the artist who did Airboy that Buzz and I had checked out and we really liked and we talked about in previous episodes. But this is a, just a one-and-done original graphic novel uh, that takes a look at Stephen Thorne, the main character. His fiance has vanished without a trace 10 years ago. And now he has kind of went become like a victim's rights crusader, uh, like that one guy that that did the shows for those, those most wanted shows for no, a right. long time. The, there's I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but fast forward ten years later, he gets a phone call and hears her voice again for the first time in ten years, and that sets him on the quest to find his fiance. This is taken. 
from a real life story that happened to Jason McNamara in real life. And he has take taken it further. He and his he and his his uh, girlfriend at the time were traveling uh, through through the uh, East Coast, uh, up North Carolina or Kentucky, one one of those areas. The car broke down. They pulled off on the side of the road. They held. They waved their hand and, and hailed some uh, somebody down. A guy in a truck stops. He's like, "Hey, I can help you pull you to the next gas station." He has a, a big uh, strap that he ties their car to to his truck and. Jason McNamara, the rider, is behind the vehicle, pushing the vehicle off the side of the road, and the truck is pulling while the girlfriend's steering it to get it on get it on the road. Well, then the truck doesn't stop. And this really happened to the guy. Mm-hmm. He keeps pulling the car, and Jason McNamara is chasing after him. And he he like uh, and she's like honking the horn for him to stop. She's trying to hit on the brakes, and it doesn't take. And then finally, she snaps on the brakes one good time, and it breaks the strap. And they they get out. The truck drives off for a little bit. They go and literally hide in the in the side off the road in the woods, because the guy pulls the truck forward a little bit, and then he gets out looking around for it for both of them, not able to find him. Then he finally drives off. And this story picks it up from there and and at just at, puts the question out there: What if it was a chain that was attached to two vehicles and not a strap that was easily breakable? And 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 the, and the girlfriend went, went away. So I'm really looking forward to this. I've seen some preview pages of it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to check this out. I'm really Sounds interested good. in the story. So there we go, guys. I'm probably butchering how that's actually described, but I mean that I read the interview with uh, Jason McNamara talking about that, and that was the gist of it there. So if you get a chance, check out this Rattler graphic novel. We'll have a, a couple here in stock. You'll be able to order it. Your local comic shop will be able, be able to order it as well. So there we go, guys. Those are our favorites. Tons of number ones from different companies. Storylines hitting this week and our favorites. And then, guys, this past weekend, Daredevil Season 2 dropped. But along with that, so did the newest trailer for X-Men Age of Apocalypse drop. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Guys, we want to know what you think of the newest X-Men Age of Apocalypse trailer with our question of the week. Buzz, you just got to see it. What do you think about it? The first images and preview I saw of this movie, I had no interest in seeing it. But after the second preview and this most current one, uh, I'm definitely interested in seeing it even more so than before. The only thing I don't really care for in the whole storyline there is that Magneto is following Apocalypse. Because Magneto has never been a pawn, you know. Right. And but as far as just, I mean, I'm gonna go see it regardless. Yeah. Just you know, maybe it explains it a little bit better, you know. But what do you think uh, you're most looking forward to seeing? Or mo- what? What do you want to know? The what do you want to know about it the most? What's the thing that's like you're most excited to see? Archangel and Psylocke both look awesome. I was uh, cool. another disappointed thing about this though is this was the perfect spot for him to introduce Cable. Ah, and they didn't do it. Ah, well, well, that we know. I mean, <laughs> surely, surely they would have something would have leaked about who Cable is. You know, like who's playing them. Right by this point, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it looks great. It looks oh, yeah. a lot better. Uh, that that uh, that one scene where it shows Apocalypse like in his human form on that table. Mm-hmm. That looked that looked wicked, man. I'm like, okay, what is this? Is this the celestial stuff that? That, that uh, Apocalypse is controlled in the past in the comic books, you know, the, the big ship that he had, mm-hmm. uh, all that jazz. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Archangel looks cool. I really want to see what's going on with, with him. And actually, I'm looking forward to Oscar Isaac's performance as Apocalypse. Yeah. People have been naysaying it and doubting it, but I'm just like, let's give it a chance. I mean, the guy's a good actor. I, you know, it, you're not going to be able to find, you know, some six foot ten actor right. to, to play this, so they'll have to do and, what they do. And he grows, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because obviously he was a human at one point. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not going to be some, you know, freak of nature before. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I'm like, uh, really, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. That, I know this is a lot of new people, but I, I kind of miss seeing Colossus mm-hmm. with the X-Men. Right. You know, I mean, he was in the in that Deadpool, uh, the Deadpool movie and stuff, and and we've seen him in the last X Men movie. But I'm like, come on, come on, he deserves more screen time. He's a great character, 
But yeah, I'm really looking. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what the, well, especially want to see what the repercussions are mm. of all this because we got more movies coming. Maybe there will be a stinger at the end that reveals a certain Nathan Summers. We will see. So guys, tell us in the comments below what you think of the new X-Men Age of Apocalypse trailer. We want to hear your thoughts. If, if you're not going to see it, if you think it looks like crud, or if you're excited to see it, if you think it looks amazing and you really want to check it out, uh, uh, let us know in the comments below. Let's have a conversation about it. You know how we are. We like to talk. And we do lots of it. Mm-hmm. And I do lots of it. Mm-hmm. And we do. So there we go, guys. Guys, that's it for this week. That's a wrap. That's this episode. Tell us in the comments below what new series you're going to check out that's coming out this week. And if you pick up the Rattler graphic novel, let me know. I want to hear your thoughts about that. Anything else to add, sir? I really am looking forward to the Capula Batman. Mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. One issue's too long. The, the, the Uncanny X-Men, too, there. That, that's been great. Yeah, I've really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I really have. I really have. So, guys, we could go on and on, but we're not going to. That's a wrap for this week. So, until our next video, take care. Read some great comics. Leave us some fantastic comments down below. And we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.